Hello, my name is Adam Murray and welcome to Extra Time. Today we are joined by a real Waterford legend. In a glitting career, he won four Munster titles, a National League and a huge five All-Stars. Welcome to the podcast, John and Anne. Here we go, on, that's not too bad. And uh, what's the feeling around the city ahead of the, the match on Sunday, John? Geez, yeah, it's with the last seven or eight days, it's, it's, it's really gone, it's really been pumped up. Uh, a lot of colour around the place, I suppose I'm going in and out of the places. It's hard to get work done because all, all lads want to do is talk about the match and I feel kind of drained myself from it. You know, kind of repeat myself over and over and over again. And, but I can only imagine what, what, the, what the players are, are must, be, must, must be going through. And look, hopefully the players are away from all that, they're insulated um, and it's not, they're not out in the public uh, eye. And I think I'd imagine that, I think Liam Cattle would and his management team would have the, the players well worn. And I suppose look, they had the experience of 2017, and even like to Kevin Moore, who's playing his third dollar, and he's experienced it twice before. So I think they would be able to learn and from um, previous finals. It's it's a whole new ball game for some of the younger lads. And I suppose when you're younger, I suppose I felt like in in 2002, once a final, uh, I think you just. You don't really care, I suppose. It's just, just go out and you just express yourself. And you're, you're actually seeing that, and it's very noticeable in the likes of Jack Pendergast and Davy Hutchison and Callum Lyne, some of the younger lads who have probably never played in uh, an All Ireland final before or, or finals of a, of a higher magnitude. And I suppose uh, that's shown in, in their displays. And I suppose for the elder statesmen, you're probably kind of thinking to yourself, Jesus, will I, will I be back here again? Um, but I think, look, I think uh, I think that the conditions are are well suited for him going into this final in regards, you know, hype. Don't have to worry about tickets. Um, don't have to worry about up for the match. Um, don't have to worry about banquets, suits, homecoming. They're just going up and they're just playing the match, and uh, that's all they have to focus on is is playing the match for seventy three, seventy four minutes, and and giving it everything as a, as a collective uh, as a collective unit. Um, to win this weekend, do you think Waterford are going to need goals? Um, would you be able to dug out now yourself? What's that? Um, to win this weekend, Waterford are going to need goals. Do you think you'd be able to tug out yourself and help us out? Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, I tell you, you know, I think you should be calling on Dan Shannon. Dan Shannon was more, more the goal getter in, in, in our team. Uh, but no, you're 100% right. I think they're going to have to score two. Possibly three, maybe goals, uh, but I'd be more concerned out at the back that I think the total focus is out the back. We didn't concede a goal in the Munster final, which was massive. And look, we know that Limerick, uh, you know, they can they can rack up big scores, big point tallies. So look, they scored twenty seven points the last day. They scored. Uh, what was the score in the Munster final? They scored what was it twenty five points? Twenty five points to twenty one in the Munster final. So. I think what's key for Robert, I would allow him to concede possibly one goal, but most certainly not two or three goals. I think if, 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 if they concede two or three goals, it's going to be an uphill task. If we can keep keep the goals out, um, possibly only concede one goal, and if we can we can we can if we can raise a couple of green flags, I think we have a super chance. And look, the lads, they are manufacturing the efforts, um, they are creating the efforts, and I think goal opportunities will present themselves. Uh, Sunday, and I think it's going to be key that they do take those goal opportunities. And um, when you were playing 7 and 8 against Kilkenny, uh, they were the big favourites, and uh, the last time Watford were in the Ireland, they were underdogs as well. Do you think uh, this week, is there anything we can do to kind of help the, or help have the underdog tag help us? Yeah, well, look, I suppose 2008, I suppose we came up against probably. The greatest team of, of all time um, in their pomp in their peak. Uh, I can't really can't really speak for the lads in, in twenty seventeen. They had momentum going with them. Uh, they beat beat Kilkenny mm-hmm. that year. Uh, they beat Cork, um, but they came up against a, a very very good Galway team who were going for who were going for the clean sweep that year. But I just don't know. I just think something is something is telling me is something different about about. Uh, this team and, and the way they're going into this final, they've got massive momentum and um, going with them. Now look, if you ask me before the Munster final, who, who, who would win between Waterford and Limerick? 
you know, it was, it, was, it was it was hard to look beyond Limerick in the Munster final, coming off of a, a great great uh, win against Tipperary in the Munster semi final. Um, but I just think this Waterford team, I just think they're growing, they're growing, um, game by game, and I think they've come on tenfold since the Munster final, and I think. I think they're in a really, really, really good place going into this final. Possibly in a better place than we were in 2008, and possibly in a better place than uh, than they were three years ago in 2017. So I think it's 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 a fantastic opportunity for them to get over the line. And um, what what weakness in Limerick do you think Waterford will try and exploit at the weekend? Yeah, well, look, I suppose we have seen in the Munster final that. You know, when you run at this Limerick team, and you know, possibly the last day as well, Galway when they brought Brian Kincannon and Connor Whelan when they ran at Limerick, you know, they they do they do seem to concede an awful lot of frees, um, and an awful lot of frees that they give away our border line as well. So I think that will be the plan again. Is you know, Liam Cat will be stressing to the players is that you know, if we get the ball head down, you go straight for goal, and you know, I think. If, if 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 the goal opportunities don't present themselves, you will be thinking then that we'll we'll get the, the second best thing. We'll, we'll probably get a we'll probably be awarded a free. And I think in the Munster final, I think the worry for John Kylie and his team is that they conceded an awful lot of frees in that Munster final. And so I think that will be that's kind of a small bit of a weakness for Limerick. And at the present moment, time is, is the concession of frees are given away. And look, obviously all the talk, talk is that. Um, you know, their full back line without Richie English who was back on the bench and Mike Casey that, you know, they could be weak in the full back line, but they haven't been exposed uh, to date. There haven't been, you know, many teams that could go and, you know, really trouble them in, in that full back line and, and ask the questions. I mean, seen the last day, they didn't concede a goal in the month of final. They didn't concede a goal against, uh, they didn't concede a goal against uh, Galway the last day either. So, uh, but look, you'd be hoping that you'd win enough ball out on that middle third, get enough ball into the likes of Desi, um, Ozzy, and, and if Stephen Bennett, uh, you know, arrives in there at some time throughout the course of the 70 minutes, that you know they might pose problems for that for that limit full back. And uh, would there be any areas of uh, the Waterford team that you might be a bit worried about? Well, look again, as I said, you know, all the talk. Going into this final, if Limerick are not scoring goals, that's always a worry for me. Uh, you know, when when a, when when a team is being talked up that they're not scoring goals, that's when a team will will will, will hit you for goals. And um, when you when you're not expecting to score goals, they'll come and they'll hit you for goals. And look, I suppose if there is to be a small bit of worry, is, is that you know we conceded uh, five goals in the last two games, and um, and we can't. We can ill afford to present those opportunities to to, to limit the weekend. Because I go back to it, and um, if we concede uh, goals on Sunday, it's it's going to be an it's going to be an uphill task. And uh, where you see Kyle Hayes go from centre forward wing back back earlier in the championship? What's that? Were you surprised to see um, Kyle Hayes move from centre forward to wing back? Yeah, I suppose look, that 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 was a rabbit out of the hat. That was, you no, know, I don't think anyone uh, foreseen was go, was going to happen. Um, and most certainly against Tipperary, I don't think they foreseen it was going to happen. And I suppose it went so well that I suppose John Coyley, seeing that you know they have a, a, a big green wall there in 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 Coyle Hayes, uh, Hannon, uh, Burns, and you you Willow Dunno and. Um, Donovan will probably come in the weekend, and then I suppose look, uh, King Lynch went so well then at number eleven in that game. I know I suppose the, the the big thing for for me the weekend is is uh, the biggest head scratcher for Walter the weekend is, is going to be King Lynch at number eleven. If he, if he does start at number eleven, you know that's a bit of a head scratcher for Liam Cattle in the guards. Like you know, does Tyg, you know, follow follow King Lynch or does he sit or do Waterford? And get someone just just a just a man mark, uh, Keen Lynch and, and a little toy to sit. But that that for me is probably the the biggest head scratcher for for Liam Cattle and his management team this week. And uh, I suppose in a similar way, Ken McGrath would have been kind of player was playing at centre forward and in the half back line, and uh, Austin Gleeson probably did the same. But like 
Where do you think uh, Ozzy's best position is, or where do you think to get the most out of him? Ah, look, I, I just think Ozzy's one of those type of players that, you know, he's a flawed genius. He, you could play him anywhere. Uh, you could play him wing back, centre back, midfield, centre forward, wing wing forward, anywhere, anywhere across the the, the, the starting fifteen. I think the biggest thing for Austin is, you know, if if the if he's in the mood and the attitude is there, and you know, if if, if he looks to work hard, just continues to work hard uh, for the team, I think the rest falls into place. Um, and look, we've seen it the last day. You know, when he went to work, he socks off. You know, the last two scores he got against Kilkenny, they came off of the, you know, just manic work rate, chasing lads, going into rooks, and and, and he managed to get the breaks, and he, he ended up getting two unbelievable scores. So, look, I just think, for now, I think his best position is is, is, is possibly centre fall, centre fall, somewhere around it, the half hour line, um, or possibly coming deep in, in, in the midfield, as he, did, as he did against Kilkenny. Look, further, further down the road, when he reaches his late twenties, possibly his Ken McGrath, they might look to uh, to, to, to push him back in, in, into the half back line. But for now, I think we possibly the, the best centre back in the in the country. And look, Austin is is is, 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 is playing unbelievable hurling at the moment. Uh, so I think he better off just leave him well enough alone. And uh, John, do you think there will be any changes in the water team this weekend? Uh, possibly. I, what I would do, I'd, I'd, I'd hold uh, Montgomery. I think Montgomery, for me, I think he's programmed to uh, to come in off the bench. I think it'd be a mistake to start Montgomery. I think you go back to 2017 when when Waterford, when Morris Shanahan was coming in after 50 minutes. You know, you go back to the, the All Ireland final in 2017 when when Shane Bennett got injured. You know, all of a sudden then Morris Shanahan was, was thrown in that little bit earlier, and I think that probably upset. The apple in 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 in, in Derek McGrath's um, way of thinking, the way that the way the game would unfold. So, if there is any changes, possibly maybe Conor Gleeson might come in. Um, but look, I think you know, does Jay Dillon, does any of those lads deserve to be dropped here and Bennett? I don't think so. I think Jay Dillon, I'm not just saying it from my own club, but I think he was excellent the three previous games. He'd one bad quarter, and. Uh, I don't know. I just think I just think Liam Cattle will be will be loyal to the starting fifteen. I think he realise that, you know, we need to get off the good start, and if we're there after 50, 50 minutes, well then you can bring on the likes of the Montgomerys, the Connor Gleasons, the Padgett Kearns, the Barry Lines, the early the, the early Davies. Um, and look, this game is not going to be won or lost in, in the first ten or fifteen minutes. This game, I think, is going to go down to the wire. I think it's going to be it's going to be won or lost in the last twenty minutes. And uh, seeing the Walford team, they all learned, uh, would it possibly bring about a, a little bit of jealousy like that you think, you wish you were, you were still out there playing? Ah, well, no, look, so look, I'm gone out of it. So I'm gone out of the best part of, 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 of eight years. Uh, look, when, when you reflect back, you possibly would have liked to play in, 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 in more finals and given yourself more opportunities to, to get over the line. But, nah, look, um, Look, the first year or two was, was possibly a uh, small bit difficult when, when, you, when you do step away. But now, nah, look, I was, I was a great supporter uh, before I became a player. And look, I'm, I'm back that way now, as the hunting out the front. You know, the kids are really enjoying it. Um, so, look, I'm not, not envious one bit. I'm lucky enough to have, um, I'll, be, I'll be up there Sunday uh, through the radio. I'll be a proud Waterford man. I'll be delighted to be up there. Um, one of the lucky lads to, to, to get it to get a ticket for Sunday. So no, look, for me, you know, when I was playing, it was always about bringing joy to the people of Waterford. Uh, you know, and obviously you had that target of, of trying to land the Holy Grail. But look, it wasn't for the want to try and we tried our best, but we, we just came up short and you know, you're you're, you're proud of, of your achievements and what, what we've done. But look, Time moves on, and um, time waits for no man. And look, I had my time. I'm gone out of it eight, eight or nine years, so I'm I'm well over that 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 period of, you know, wouldn't you love to be out there? Or wouldn't you love to be out there? Obviously, look, it's an all and final, but look, I'm totally 100% behind the lads. And look, I'm like yourself. I'm like the Tui. I'm like any elder statesman, elder person in water. I'm like any kid now who just just wants to see this monkey finally being taken off our backs. 
61 years is too long. Um, <laughs> and I just think it's, it's, it's long overdue. And I just think it's a case of it doesn't matter who uh, or what player or what team um, gets the job done. Once, once Lee McCarthy finally arrives back with blue and white ribbons, blue and white ribbons to, uh, to, to the Deja County. And uh, finally, to finish up, tell us where Waterford can win the game this weekend. Yeah, I think I think the start is crucial. I think uh, if we can get off the good start, I, I can foresee it going, I can foresee it being cagey early doors, very edgy. Um, I think it'll be nip and tuck. I think they'll go score for score. I think it'll be possibly a point or two in it in, in, the, in the first quarter. I think the second quarter then, I could foresee maybe Limerick possibly going ahead. They seem to dominate that uh, that that second quarter and all that games. Possibly going ahead by two or three points. That won't be the end of the world. Even even four points at half time. Then it's the third quarter. I think where where we've seen over the last couple of games where Waterford, you know, they've totally dominated the third quarter. I can see him get on top there. And what I can foresee then is maybe Limerick possibly being a point, only a point, possibly even two points ahead. Going into the last quarter, and then what I do, I just see that I do. I can foresee that energy, the legs off the bench. I can see the drive on the sideline from from Liam Cattle, Mikey Bevan, playing every ball with the lads, and I can just see lads saying to themselves, "You know what? And um, this famine is, is finally going to come to an end." And I can see Limerick, who possibly. You know, they don't panic, they, they, they stick to the game plan, they don't deviate from, from how they play. I can see them getting a little bit nervy, a little bit edgy, and I can see our lads just going right first uh, in the last five, six minutes and just about getting over the line by a point. And uh, finally, just the last thing, um, will, you, will you stick true to your promise of 2017 and uh, ride a horse down the key if they win? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm mad enough to do it, but I'm after being forewarned. Uh, I think 2017 was, was a bit of crack, and I think uh, if it was ever going to happen, I think it, it possibly would. In 2017, I was going to roll with it, but I think uh, the wife, the wife, the wife, uh, the wife had me forewarned. She's saying, like, you know, Jesus, we're not going through this horse business again. So she said to me, said, look, it's either, it's either me, it's either me or the horse. So I, I probably. <laughs> Probably, uh, I think that the Horace could possibly be an on runner. Look, it was a bit of crack back in 2017, but um, yeah, I, I think that Horace is as a horse that that ship is well sailed. Um, but look, I think there's a God, no, look, we all don't know what could happen. Look, look, for me, I actually don't know what I'll do myself. I think I think I'll probably possibly shed a tear if, if we, uh, you know, when the final whistle comes. And um, look, it's it's Strange times we're living in um, with the COVID, but I think uh, look, it's it's a massive kudos to to all the players, the management team, you know, the joy that uh, they've given to us, given to the whole county um, over that course of the last six weeks has just has just been epic. Uh, and look, me personally, I just like, like to thank him. It's it's got everyone. Um, Talking about GA and, and not talking about uh, the virus and look, the virus is still there. But look, uh, whatever happens, um, look once water come, once water come, come five o'clock or come half five Sunday, once water for all Ireland champions, um, that's all that matters. Whether celebrations have to be put on hold until Lee McCarthy uh, is given to the players by the team, so be it. But look, all that matters Sunday is that team get over the line um, they go up they play the match they give it everything um, and look obviously the day of a final you always need a bit of luck and hopefully um, mm -hmm. the gods will be on our side and uh, the famine of, famine of 61 years will, will come to an end and uh, you know uh, Abby Sy Banley Cordy will have a, have a proud man hopefully going um, climbing the steps of the, the Hogan stand um, in Conor Prunty so I'll wrap this up here now, uh, A huge thanks to John for coming on our podcast today. And what a weekend we have ahead. We wish the Water team management all the luck in the world as they bid to bring Liam home after 61 years. To all of you, we hope you enjoy the game and tune in next week for our review of the game. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for our future content.
We'll see you soon on Extra Time and come on the day show. <laughs>